Hey guys, how's it going out with Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. Today, we are taking a look at a very, very cool plugin. It's totally changed my workflow. This is Miroslav Philharmonic 2 from IK Multimedia. Now, this came as part of their Total Studio Max 2 bundle, which I picked up because I felt like it was a really, really great, very full-featured bundle of all kinds of plugins and instruments and stuff um, that would replace a lot of the different subscriptions services that I was using. Now, in particular, Miroslav Philharmonic 2, the, the plugin that we're looking at right now, which is all about orchestral scoring, okay? So it's got all your strings, all your brass, all your woodwinds, pianos, orchestral progression, all kinds of stuff. I used to use East West and their East West Composer Cloud and Hollywood Strings and all that stuff because it's very, very popular among scoring professionals. And it was great. I really enjoyed it. I used it all the time. It all revolves around their kind of play software, which is their plug-in sample player. But the more I used it, I would find myself getting f a little bit frustrated because as amazing as the sounds were, and they are indeed amazing, there was just a lot of scrolling. It was a, a little bit difficult to use, and I found myself getting hung up navigating through thousands and thousands and thousands of sounds and having to dive through all these menus when like, it's like, all I need is a cello sound. And there's, you know, because it's all set up for guys who really do scoring and orchestral stuff seriously, there's you know, 50 different articulation mappings for just a simple cello part. And for some guys, that's great. For guys who this is their life, is working with orchestral instruments and doing scoring and all this kind of stuff, that's great. I do a little bit of that, but not a ton, and I'm not a well-versed classical string player. So sometimes sifting through all of these folders of Mercado, Boeing, and Spitzacino, that, and all of it, I don't even know the words necessarily, it would get a little, a little bit overwhelming when all I needed was a basic string part or was just trying to get something done quickly, I would spend more time trying to read through menus and navigate stuff and figure it out than I would spend actually creating. So when I saw that Total Studio 2 Max came with this Miroslav Philharmonic plugin, which was more dedicated towards orchestral scoring and looked easier to use, I was really excited. And now that I've used it a little bit and started to get to know it, I'm very, very impressed. I'm having a great time with it. So we're just gonna go through some of the real basic facilities that are available in this plugin. I'm not even gonna get super into it because I'm still learning about it, but I'm just gonna show you guys what it can do, some of the sounds that it comes with, um, how to get it set up, and what you guys can expect when you download it. So this is really what you see when you very first open it up. We have 16 different parts, which you can assign, of course, to 16 different MIDI channels. And this is where, just right off the bat, you know, it's very much designed for scoring. So it works as a multi-timbral MIDI instrument. So if you have a score set up or that you've written maybe in Sibelius or Finale or something, you can bring that in and, you know, map each of your different, you know, first violin part, second violin part, first viola, et cetera, et cetera, to a different MIDI channel and then load up the correct articulation mappings for each of those parts. Very, very handy, but that's not exactly unique. Lots and lots of orchestral sample players do that. But what I really like about Miroslav is just how simple it is for somebody who's not necessarily deep in the world of classical scoring. So right now, I've just got this Philharmonic Grand loaded up. This is kind of their basic grand piano sound. And it sounds... Really, really nice, at least I certainly think it does. But they have, you know, obviously everything that you're going to need. They have a couple of different options for pianos. They have tons and tons of strings. And like I was saying a minute ago about East West, there's so much scrolling and everything is really technical in East West. That was my big gripe about it. In Philharmonic, on the other hand, everything is beautifully laid out. So we can just go in here violins and you know you can go all the way through and pick all of your different articulation mappings sustains ex expressivos staccatos all this stuff i know what some of it means not all of it though but you can also just load up your basic multi-part they are also very large sample libraries so we're gonna have to wait for this to load and i have a very fast solid state hard drive and 
a very, very fast computer, and even then it still takes a fair amount of time for each of, the, each of these to load because they're sampled in such detail. I mean, you can hear the quality is just absolutely fantastic. And within this, I know that there are ways to do all of your different articulations. You know, down here and lower in the octaves on your keyboard, we have switches to control, you know, whether they're doing more aggressive bowing or pizzicato plucking or um, staccato tremolo bowing, all this kind of stuff. Uh, in the multi option, you can program all of that using these lower octave keys. Or, of course, if you just need one of those individual sounds, you can load those over here very, very easily. But it's really nicely organized. That's really kind of the point that I want to drive home here is that it it sounds great. The libraries are super extensive. They have everything that you need, but there's no more just scrolling through and scrolling through and scrolling through. It's all right here and it's all very, very easy to navigate. So I really love that. You know, again, coming from somebody who a lot of times needs string sounds, but I don't necessarily need them to be super involved and super advanced and use all these different articulations. I just need a nice, you know, something really, really simple and I need to be able to access it quickly and just start creating. This is absolutely perfect for that. But then on the flip side, if you want to really dive in, you of course can. You know, this is moving through these different articulations. You know, as we click through on these different keys, or of course you can activate them with your keyboard itself for doing performance oriented stuff. I mean, it's just great. But those are the violins. Let's take a listen to some cello sounds here. Really nice, really expressive, really authentic sounding, you know, Obviously, if you're a real orchestral professional and you're like used to scoring with real orchestras, it's not going to sound perfect. But, you know, for uh, compositions, uh, for commercial purposes, for just adding strings to your own pieces of music, for doing the kind of work that I do where I'm doing like TV commercials, radio commercials, that kind of stuff, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, they, of course, have sections and ensembles. They also have solo instruments, so solo violin, solo viola, solo cello articulations for all of those. They have full suites of all the brass you could ever need, ensemble and solo. They have wo all the woodwinds you could ever need, ensemble and solos, flutes, piccolos, clarinets, oboes, bassoons, saxes. I mean, everything, of course, solo versions for all of those. They also have a number of really, really nice uh, chromatic instruments, as they're called. So marimba, glockenspiel, chimes, harpsichord, um, like the piano, like we heard just a moment ago. They do have some older libraries as well, I, from the first version of Philharmonic, which I haven't really explored. And then we also have this whole orchestral percussion section, which has timpanis and snares and everything you could need for your orchestral percussion stuff. Um, and it also comes in a version with some loops. So these are going to be different, you know, again, Allegretto snare loops, and you could load that and play it within the plugin and, you know, kind of use that to trigger loops if that's an easier and faster way for you to create. So that is the library, or those are the libraries. And again, they sound absolutely amazing. This concert harp also sounds incredible. It's one of the better sounding concert harp. very velocity sensitive. Very, very nice. Obviously I'm not playing necessarily how a heart player would play. So those are all of the individual instruments. Now we also do have some pattern and multi stuff that we can get into that has pre-built patterns. I Honestly, haven't explored around a ton with that stuff, so I'm not going to get into it super hard. But what I will talk about is, first of all, we have this edit page. 
And this gives you a lot of different options with each of your instruments to change the overall timbre and sound of them. So you can do all different kinds of stuff and you can work by parts, whatever you have loaded up on each part you can select here. You can control the amount of polyphony, you can transpose the instrument globally, you can change the range of the instrument, and you can even get into some very basic, you know, not synthesis per se, but just using different filters and envelopes and LFOs to change the overall sound. And then we also finally have this mix page, which features a lot of components from other IK Multimedia stuff. So we have EQ and Dynamics plugins, you know, kind of plugins within plugins. We have an 1176 compressor, a limiter, a 670 compressor, uh, LA2A compressor, a uh, Poltec 2 BQ. We even have some basic modulation functions in here, choruses and flanging and stuff if you want to get a little more wild with your sounds. Really nice selection of reverbs and delays, including this convolution reverb, which is pretty basic overall, but sounds really, really nice and really, really convincing. Um, so there's a ton of really useful options in here if you want to work with the mixer just within the software, you know, within all 16 of your different channels. You can also do some basic kind of send and return stuff. If you want to send everything to the same reverb and have that on, on, a, on an effect send like you would on a console or something, that's all an option in here. Again, the, the thing that really strikes me about it is just that it's very easy to use. It's fun to work with, it's simple, it's really easy to navigate, it's really intuitive, and it works a lot better for what I needed to do than East West ever did. I think that the sounds themselves in East West might be a little bit tighter, and I know that if you really get into it, there you can do stuff in East West that's just crazy in terms of like microphone positioning and all this kind of stuff. But what I really love about Philharmonic, this plugin, it's it's just so easy to use that it ends up being a lot more inspiring than really any other big string library I've ever used. I can just pull up the sound that I want if I want to start composing with violins or cellos or whatever. I can do that if I just want to use it for one basic sound. I just need a little cello pad in the background. I can do that if I want to set it up as a whole multi-timbral orchestration type thing. I can do that really, really easily. The routing's intuitive. The mixer is great and actually really powerful. Comes with some great sounds and, and tools in it. And then we also just have some basic controls down here at the bottom, so you don't even have to go into the mixer. You know, you can just, you know, you've got a little bit of EQ, you've got a a little bit of you know reverb and kind of macro controls down here or you can turn it over and you know work with the effects directly that's all in this main page as well your pitch and mod are totally assignable if you need them to do anything you can of course do MIDI learning for controllers and all this kind of stuff I mean it's just it is very very full featured and overall just a great great solution for anyone who needs really good quality string sounds but doesn't want to go totally crazy learning how to score and how to use some of these more complex sample libraries so two thumbs up I absolutely love it I'm using it quite a bit and I'm sure I'm going to use it a lot more in the future um, so yeah that is Miroslav Philharmonic 2. But what do you guys think? Whatever your thoughts may be, leave them in the comments down below. If you have Miroslav Philharmonic 2 and really like it, if you prefer the East West stuff, or I know Native Instruments has a bunch of string libraries, there's all this kind of thing on the market. Whatever you guys like to use, please let me know. I love hearing from you. If you haven't subscribed to Concert Indies YouTube channel as of yet, please do so. Click that notification bell to be notified when we post new videos. And if you enjoyed this video and want to give it a like or a share, that would be awesome as well. But in any case, my name is Alex Scott with ConcertDini.com. Thank you guys again so very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.